I have recently cleared my PLAB. So I have recently cleared my PLAB and Alhamdulillah, I'm now just preparing for MRCP part two. So, sorry, part one. So our today's session is on obstetrics. So before discussing it, I would like to discuss a few things that is really important for you all to know uh, from the very beginning. So as Dr. Hamid has already discussed with you the basic structure for the history taking, all right. So you should, you all should know that whenever you're preparing for a, each and every station, you need to work on three areas. The first area is history taking. The second one is the management part. And the third one and the most important part is IPS. So for each station, you should have to work in all the categories. Otherwise, even if you have work in the two and the third one is weak, that's going to make a bit trouble for you. So you should have to keep in mind that for each station from the very beginning, you should learn that what points are very important, that what points you are supposed not to skip. Because as you have already attended the other stations or uh, our sessions and you must be aware of the fact that there are a lot of knowledge that you, we have asked you to ask in the station. And that is very clear that it is not possible for us to cover all the questions within eight minutes. And already we have discussed that we have to divide the eight minutes in two part and we have to cover the management part as well. And we have to listen to the patient as well. And we have to take the history as well. So, from the very beginning, make it a habit of yours that always for every station, learn the points that what points you are not supposed to skip. All right. And while the other things like while the other stage, there are always some questions that even if you do not ask, they are not going to make any difference. So from the very beginning, please make it a habit that always pinpoint or highlight the points that you have to cover by hook or by crook in your history. All right. So. Uh, well, basically, all the history taking stations, either it is from medicine, either it is from uh, gynae, the basic framework is the same. And for, for you all, always learn the st basic structure from the very beginning, because if you do not learn the basic structure of history taking, you might miss something. Because there is a chance that you might miss something. So always keep a basic structure of history taking in your mind from the very beginning, because once you learn it, and you practice it by keeping the structure in mind. Uh, do you, when you will appear in the exam, you will uh, find the exam very easy. All right. Now, uh, talking about the obstetric uh, stations, actually, the history taking part is a bit same as uh, we do for the medicine, simple cases. But there's a few differences that we have to cover because, as you know, in the obstetric stations, the patient is pregnant and for sure because she is pregnant, so we have the focused areas of ours would be different. And as you already know that why we are appearing in the PLAB1 and PLAB2 exam, the PLAB1 and PLAB2 exam is just from the GMC to make sure that you people are safe at FY1 and FY2 level. They just want to make sure that you people are safe. They don't want to, they all know that you are already aware of the bookish knowledge. They just want to assess you that either you are a safe doctor to work at the FY1 and FY2 levels in the hospitals. And you, the main uh, screening uh, is to, to just find that you are a safe doctor because what is, who is the safe doctor is? The safe doctor is the one who knows when to inform the seniors, when to involve the seniors, what information am I supposed to deliver to the patient and what information am I not supposed to deliver at that moment. So that is what the safe doctors do. All right. So uh, moving forward now, what we are going to do in today's session is, first of all, I'm going to discuss with you all the approaches regarding uh, the OPS and all the cases. And afterwards, I will give you you give all of you equal chance to practice because once you practice, you will have a lot of questions and so that you can ask a question and I can answer your query. All right. So starting from the basic thing that is when a case in which there is a, the patient is pregnant, how you are going to approach this case. So first of all, whenever the stem comes in your hand, you should focus on the first part that is where you are. According to the stem, where you are sitting, are you in the uh, GP surgery, or you are in the emergency department, or you are in the antenatal care, or you are in the hospital uh, and uh, ops and gynae department. So you should know that in which area you are currently right now, according to the staff. Then the second part you should have focused on is 
whom am I talking to? Am I talking to the patient or am I talking to the relative of the patient? And the last but not the least, you should know that what the task says. For example, the task is saying that take a focus history and address the patient concerns. So that means, according to that task, the main point is you have to cover all the parts of the management that Dr. Hamid has already told you. But the main focus would be a focus history and addressing the concerns. Now, for example, the task says the take of history, assess the patient and discuss the management. So that means and that it, it is actually asking you to cover the whole and all the portions of the management are equally important. So you should have a grip on what is the task saying and how I have to move forward. Secondly, the most important thing is uh, either you are studying on your own or you are joining some academies or you have whatever notes you are using, you will see at the end, all of you are studying the same stations. Like uh, even if the thousand stations are there, everybody who is going to appear in the lab are studying or reading or practicing the same stations and all are reading all the knowledge that, for example, we have provided to in the task uh, in the, our notes or the other people have provided in the notes. The only thing that is going to make a difference is what? How you are going to deliver this information to the patient. They don't want you to deliver each and everything you know. They want, they want to see that, do you know that which information is really you need to deliver to the patient and how you're going to deliver to the patient. For example, uh, if I am, or, or if I'm having some medical book and I'm, and I have uh, told him about some complication or some diagnosis as it is, as it has been written in my, uh, medicine book, they're not going to, uh, you know, uh, I'm not going to get a good marks because uh, they want me that I should have used a knowledge or, or the words or the language that is easily understandable for the patient. All right. All right. So let's move forward when the patient is pregnant. So in the cases when the patient is pregnant, first of all, what you will see, is it the first visit or the follow up visit? When it is the first visit, what you're going to do is you're going to start with the grips, like greet the patient by having a very smiley face and introduce yourself. All right. And make a build a repo and then ask, like, how can you how can I help you? So always when it is the first visit, start with the grips. But if it is a follow up case, for example, the patient was already in your practice and today he is now here for, to get the report. So you are st uh, supposed to paraphrase it. Now, now how I'm going to paraphrase it, I'm going to make a whole background. For example, well, Clara, as you know, that as I uh, as I can see from your notes here, or you can say, well, I can see that previously you have visited us and we have done a few tests on you and now you are here for the reports. Am I right? Okay, so uh, she will reply, yes, doctor, I'm here for the reports. All right, has somebody explained it to you? You have to ask her, has somebody explained it to you? She will. She might say, no, doctor, no one has discussed it with me. Then you are going to say, all right, let me discuss it with you before proceeding forward. Let me ask a few questions first. So always either is it a first visit or is it a follow-up visit? You are supposed to complete your history before discussing the management or discussion because that way what you are going to do is you are going to develop a repo. Okay, so you are going to build a rapport with the patient. So how we're going to start it? First of all, patient came to you, grips. Then uh, if it is a follow-up case, do paraphrasing. And then what uh, the history that is different from the medicine cases is P2RBMS. We will discuss it, what it is. You have to learn it because all the points that we'll cover in the mnemonic, uh, every, each and every question is really important in the pregnant female scenarios. So first of all, when the pregnant female came, you have to ask a question, is this your first pregnancy? All right. If she says that it is my first pregnancy, that all right, jump to the, uh, 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 jump to the, uh, uh, to, to ask about the uh, uh, questions about her uh, current uh, pregnancy. But if she says that this is not my first pregnancy, I have been pregnant before, then ask about the history of the previous pregnancies. For example, ask, like how many, uh, how many times have you been pregnant before? All right. And then ask individually uh, about, for example, she has been pregnant two times before, then ask uh, about the two pregnancies separately. So what questions you are supposed to ask about are, how was your pregnancy? Was there any complication in the previous pregnancy? How did the pregnancy end? By this question, what I mean to say, I mean to say that either you have delivered a healthy baby or there was some loss. So, so what question uh, I will ask? 
how did the pregnancy ends? Then if she replies, oh, uh, doctor, I have a miscarriage at this moment and you have to show us sympathy and empathy. All right. So you have to say, uh, I'm really sorry for the for your loss. So then ask further that uh, where did it happen? Like, is it happened at the hospital or you were at home? And if you were at home, did you come to the hospital after the loss and have they done some tests on you? And what you have been told afterwards? So there are a few questions that if the person or if the patient mentions that I am I have I have been pregnant before, you have to ask about the other pregnancies. Uh, right now, uh, even if you skip a few questions because because of the time time issue, you can skip it. But still, uh, you know, uh, uh, never skip the question that is how was the your pregnancy? Do you have any complication? And how did it end? All right, never ever skip these three questions. Uh, other questions you can skip if you don't have time, but never ever skip these three questions because these three questions are really important. Now, the next is, when you are done with the history of the previous pregnancies, now move towards the present pregnancy. Now, what you are going to ask about the present pregnancy, you should know that uh, at what stage it is. So you should know, uh, you should ask, when was your last menstrual period and how many weeks pregnant are you? Afterwards, ask a few questions, one to two questions of the pregnancy symptoms, like the pregnancy symptoms are nausea, vomiting, fatigue, and breast heaviness. You can ask one or two, that's it. And then the most important thing that you are supposed not to miss are the red flags of the pregnancy. That is really, really, really important for all the scenarios re regarding the uh, pregnant females. So what are the red flags of the pregnancy? That could be preeclampsia or that could be bleeding. So what symptoms you are going to ask about the preeclampsia? Do you have any tummy pain, any headache or blurry vision? Have you noticed any swellings on your leg? Have you noticed any bleeding from your front passage? Or you can also uh, ask the same question in this way. Have you noticed any bleeding from your vagina? Because uh, both ways it's fine. Then what comes next is baby well-being. So you're going to ask the patient, do you know how many babies you have? And if the patient is 12 weeks beyond, then you're going to ask, are you have, do you feel the kicks of the baby? If, if, if the patient is less than 12 weeks, you are not going to ask this question. Otherwise, that would be a blunder. So you're going to ask it if she is 12 weeks beyond, like, do you uh, feel the kicks of the baby and how many times? And then ask about, uh, have you been regular with your antenatal checkups? And then what comes next is menstrual history, because why it is really important here because she is pregnant she is uh, she, that might be her first antenatal checkup so we should know either the date she is giving us about her uh, uh, gestational age is it right or not so you should ask how is your menstrual periods regular or irregular and how many days do you bleed even if you miss that uh, question how many days do you bleed it's fine but it, you can ask it now the next category now the next thing would be the sexual history now the sexual history is really important here why because we have already read about the torch infections so in the pregnant females in their antenatal checkups or in their follow up visits that is really important for us to know are they at the risk of getting such kind of infections so and are they at the risk of you know uh, spreading this infection to the newborn so sexual history is really important here so what you going to ask uh, is are you in a stable relationship if she says yes then fine if she says no then say by any chance uh do you have any other partner is your partner male and female do you practice safe sex if the person says what do you mean by the face safe sex doctor you can say just to save your time you can say on your own do you practice safe sex by that i mean do you use condoms all right and then ask have you had any history of vaginal discharge or sexually transmitted infections? So each and every question that each and every part that we have covered here, P2, uh, RB, MS, each and everything is fine. I have, uh, is important in the pregnant females history. And these, all the questions will also define that you are a safe doctor. So you are supposed to learn this mnemonic so that you won't skip anything from all three, these seven uh, uh, things like, Pregnancy histories, previous and present, miscarriage histories, the red flags, the most important, the baby well-being, menstrual history, and sexual history. Now, moving towards the next. After that, what you are going to do is you are going to complete the rest of the history. The, the, the Dr. Hamid, like he told you, PMMA, HO family. I, I, think, I believe that you all are aware of that. That by M, you mean that any 
do you have any long term medical problem all right so m for mean that you are having taking any medications or any supplements a for allergic to anything or you have you developed any allergy to any medication or blood transfusion h o is for any hospital stays or any surgeries and F4 is family. Now, in the uh, in in cases where the female is pregnant, the long term problems like diabetes and hypertension and the family history of uh, diabetes, hypertension in pregnancy and history of miscarriages or history of clot formation during the pregnancy in like so lungs. These points are really important here. So you can just make a start if you if you have notes with you. These two points, these two categories are really important to ask in these. Uh, situations because uh, most of the time the cases might present that the person is having miscarriages and she is worried that why is she having uh, the two miscarriages already and she is worried that uh, how this pregnancy gonna end so don't miss these parts then then as usual dessa is for how is the diet physical exercise sleep or stress smoke now d e s even if you are not finding the time you might can skip it if the if you you are short of time if you can ask very well done but if you can skip like you are not having much time you can skip it now the thing that you are not supposed to skip is the smoking history never ever skip the smoking and drinking history in the pregnant female so you you need to ask do you smoke if she says yes ask what do you smoke and for how long and for how much all right and then ask about the alcohol history same for how long and how much are you drinking all right and if the person says about that that yes i do smoke or i do drink do ask about the recreational drugs as well and not uh, say directly that do you do recreational drugs never ever say this because by that uh, you you might lack in ips so you should so well there are a few questions that we really need to ask uh, about so just to make sure that your uh, baby is fine so do you do recreational recreational drugs all right but that but that mean you won't offend the other person all right and then you can uh, you need to ask about the traveled abroad or took a long flight and what do you do for living and whom do you live with that that's all we are going to cover in the history now the aiec is basically the part of the ips what you can ask simply about the is uh, about the uh, to the patient as you can simply ask do you have any particular concern or you can say is there anything that i am missing for example when in any kind of scenario when you are kind of you know in doubt that i might miss something you can save yourself by saying is there anything else that i should know or is there anything uh, important that we have not talked about and then always make it a habit to ask about do you have any concern all right and then what comes is the oet oet is observation examination and the test so observations what we going to do is we are going to ask the patient that uh, all right clara so i need to take your blood pressure pulse temperature and respiratory rate also i would like to examine your uh, i would like to do an abdominal examination and the pelvic examination for that i will maintain your privacy and there will be a chaperone with us if you find any discomfort please let let me know is it okay for you you have to involve the patient in your conversation do not just continue like you are delivering the lecture always check the presence of the patient are you with me clara is it okay for you clara so that you are that means you are actually involving the patient in the whole this and taking in the whole conversation you have you you should have a friendly approach and the next is the t t is for bedside test so the bedside test that we can ask for during the in the pregnant females as the pregnancy test and the urine dipstick if uh, the condition is uh, the scenario is according to that so the next thing is management the management you have already covered that you have to disclose or explain the situation then if the patient has addressed has asked a few concerns has raised some concerns you are supposed to address the concerns because if you ignore the concerns even if you have performed very well you might fail the station so never ever ignore the patient concerns never then targeted management and the long term management what is the long term management is like if you are going to say about some lifestyle modification some safety netting you are offering leaflets and then follow up and or end should always be like if the patient is fine you can simply say have a good day and if the patient is not fine you can say may you have a speedy recovery so your end must be according to the situation so let's discuss the different scenarios first so the if you people if you have people have any question you people can raise your hand and i will let you know to ask
All right. So uh, the our first case is the first antenatal visit. So the scenario says you are an F five two doctor in the ops and gynae department. So where am I? I am in the ops and gynae department. Mrs. Audrey Jones is a twenty five years old lady who came for the routine follow up. She had her menstrual cycle six weeks ago, and this is her first antenatal visit. Please assess the patient and discuss a further management plan. Now, this is the stem that is for us. Now, the next information is for the patient. Uh, so you are Audrey Brown, a 25-year-old lady. You had two miscarriages at eight weeks. The miscarriage was two years ago. You are taking this. You smoked for the years. This is your third pregnancy. You did a pregnancy test. And you are here for the routine follow-up. You are fit and not taking any regular medications. Now, now, uh, now you went to see the GP, but nothing was found. And the GP simply said that you should try again. So the questions. Now, you should have an idea from this stem that the stem that or the, you can say the task they have provided to the patient. You should get an idea that if this information the examiner have provided to the patient, that means I am supposed to ask this question. That is just for right now because for sure during the exam, you are not going to get the case notes that uh, that are for the patient. For sure, sure, you are going to get just your scenario. But right now, while, while you are practicing, you can get an idea. All right. So these all the questions that the examiners has already delivered, uh, yeah, has already asked the patient to know, because I, I am supposed to ask these questions in this in, in this scenario. And what's the question uh, patient going to ask is, do you think everything will be fine? Is it going to happen again? What you are going to do for me? And will I be able to have a baby? And how can I make sure I don't have any other miscarriage? So that is what the stamp is. So now, what, uh, uh, as we have already mentioned the approach, approach would be the same. So the data gathering would be same. The, the case is first antenatal. So what we're going to start with? Grips. Then history of the previous pregnancies, then we are going to come to the current pregnancy, then what is baby well-being, then menstrual history, sexual history, and then my whole other history. And then I'm going to cover the eyes. Um, uh, eyes as like, the, the, that is the, you can just ask one question, like, do you have any particular concern? All right. And then OET, if the, or now here is a very important thing you people should know that exam, you are supposed to do the examination only if there is a manikin. All right, like practically, if there is a mannequin in the room, if there is no mannequin, they are not going to ask you to practice on the uh, interlocutor or in the person who is actually behaving like a patient. So, but still during your course, you during your station, you have to mention the examination because when you, uh, when you mention the examination and the test you want to do in the patient, the examiner might uh, provide you a leaflet or, or a page in which all the findings will, will be mentioned. So don't get confused. You, if even if the mannequin is in the room or not, you are supposed to complete your step by mentioning that you want to do the examination. What examination you need? You are supposed to do on the female, pregnant females is the abdominal and the pelvic examination and general physical examination. So, what we you are going to say, as I have already mentioned, that I would like to examine your abdomen and your pelvis, and or you can say, well, I need to do abdominal and pelvic examination, and also I need to look from examine you from head to toe, and I'll be maintaining your privacy, and there will be a chaperone with us. Is it okay for you? And then you can mention the bedside test if it if according to the scenario. Like in this scenario, you can mention that if the patient has not done pregnancy test, you can offer her that I need to do a pregnant pregnancy test and also a urine dipstick test. If the uh, examiner will be having the findings, he will give give it to you. But if he do not give you the findings, any findings, do not get confused. Just ignore it. All right. Now, what comes next is the management. Now, what is it? Always make a plan of yours. Once you mention the observations and the uh, examination, until and unless you are not supposed to do it on your own, the examiner will provide you the findings. If he does not provide you the findings, then just ignore it. Do not make up story on your own. Now, what you are going to do is you are going to explain the situation. Always start with explaining the vitals. So, uh, so clear, according to your examination, your blood pressure is at this, your pulse is at this, your oxygen and temperature levels are also normal. And on examination, I have found this, 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 whatever the examiner will provide provide you with the findings and also we did some test on you and your pregnancy test is positive all right and right now you are absolutely fine and you are pregnant all right and then 
concern patient will ask about the concern right away like do you think everything will be fine what will you say yes everything will be fine and this is your first antenatal checkup so we need to run some tests including routine blood test to check if your liver and kidneys are working well and also we need to screen you for a few infections and also we need to do ultrasound of your abdomen is the, is it fine for you then the patient is going to ask is it going to happen again will i have a baby she will be concerned. You can say you have to acknowledge her reaction. You have to say, well, I can see that you are very concerned about that. And I can see that must be very difficult for you. Uh, but just because you had two miscarriages does not increase the risk of the third miscarriage. And right now, you have just as much chance of preg get pregnant as any other female. You can have a normal pregnancy. Are you with me, Clara? Then she's going to say what you are going to do for me. Then you have to explain that if in unfortunate situation, if you have a third miscarriage, then we will go for the further testing to find the cause. Otherwise, there is no need. Now she asks you, like, how can I uh, prevent the miscarriage again? So you're supposed to deliver the lifestyle advice uh, advices and you have to be very uh, involving the patients. Do not uh, cover all the points like you are delivering uh, uh, a, a simple lecture you have to maintain a tone don't talk in the monotonous because in that way that would uh, that would not be impressive so always make uh, diff use different tones according to different situations and always engage the patient so Clara what you need to do is you need to attend your antenatal checkups on daily on regular basis and try to have more healthy food like you can have more fruits and veggies in your diet and eat at least five portions of a variety of fruits every day what you say what you say can you do that all right and then uh, about the exercise like all the, all the all the points that i have mentioned here that begin with the not more than 15 and continue for three times or um, avoid scuba diving and safety netting here the safety netting is really 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 important never ever skip that because in the pregnant females if you are not going to mention the safety netting points you are not a safe doctor so always mention what could be the safety netting points stomach pain headache bleeding from the vagina you can came to come to the emergency department or call 999 and also offer the leaflets and what would be the follow-up of ours it would be in a one week to discuss the test results all right So uh, if anybody of you have any question, any question, just let me know. Hello. Okay. People, do you have any question you can ask? Uh, I think uh, you people, if you have any question, you can ask so that we can move forward. And after the next uh, case discussion, uh, I will allow one of you to practice with me. I think you are not asking, so I think I should proceed forward. Now, the next situation is the follow-up case. What is this, in this case? This case is basically a follow-up case in which the patient has previously visited you and you have done a few tests on her. Like what test we are supposed to do in the antenatal checkup, especially when the female has came to us for the first time are screening for some infections, ultrasound, abdomen and routine blood tests and blood grouping and cross match. These four tests that are actually we do and th that is what we, we are supposed to mention and that is what we need to do. Uh, for the antenatal assessments and checkups. So the next scenario is our actually antenatal assessment follow-up case. So now what is it? This is the follow-up case. And the case is basically rubella, non-immune or RH negative. So this scenario can come in three, uh, in three ways. For example, um, uh, that might present that the stem uh, says that the patient is, uh, is non-immune to rubella or that could only mention that it, patient is rhesus negative. Now discuss the, with the patient or it might say the both in the stem. So you have to modify your management according to the stem they have provided you. Now, the stem says, you are referred to an antenatal clinic. A 30-year-old who is 14 weeks pregnant has come for the routine follow-up. Other info, she had some plus tests done. Everything is normal, except she has RH negative and she is known immune to rubella. Her ultrasound shows 12 weeks pregnant and fetus is normal. Talk to the patient and explain the investigation and address any concerns. Okay, so now what the patient information is, this is her first pregnancy. She is not in a stable relationship and she has mult multiple partners and she is not sure who the father of her child is. She does not perform safe sex. She uses recreational drugs and she drinks an excess of alcohol every day. Now the questions are, how is my baby? How did the test show? What is rubella? 
can it cause harm to my baby? How can I avoid the infection? And what are the symptoms of rubella? So when you prepare this case, you should know the questions to all, answers to all these questions. Now, as this is a follow-up case, so what we are going to start with, can somebody uh, para, uh, can somebody say like how we are going to paraphrase this time? Do you people do you people want me to pick one out of you? All right, Dr. Umar Malik. Hello, uh, Dr. Umar. Please unmute yourself. So, okay, so any one of you want to try, please give it a try. So you will be more confident people. And if you make any mistake, I would be able to pinpoint that mistake. Nobody wants to participate. Hello. Okay, so Dr. Umar, are you listening to me? Right, so if you people are not, uh, you, don't, you don't want to practice, then that's uh, actually the thing is, if you people actively participate, that's going to help you a lot to learn and to improve yourself. So if somebody of you wants to practice on their own, just let me know, and I will be happy to allow you to practice. Okay, so let's move forward. The next case is the antenatal, as I have already mentioned. So this is the follow-up case, people. So you are not going to start like normally you do. You have to paraphrase the scenario. Like what paraphrasing is, I understand that you're here for the routine follow-up and had we had some blood tests done and I have the results with me and has anybody explained the results to you? You have to ask that. And then explain before explaining the results, take a consent. Can I ask a few questions first? And then all the, and then the history will go the same way as we have already discussed that we will, you will ask about the current and the previous pregnancies, the baby well-being, the menstrual history, sexual history, and what you are not supposed to skip is the immunization, immunization history. This is new here because she is non-immune to rubella. Non-immune to rubella means she might not have her vaccination done. So she is at the risk of uh, getting rubella infection. So we have to ask have you completed your childhood vaccinations? All right. And also the sexual history is also very important here. And the rest will go the same way, like that's the actual family, as you have already discussed, like you do in the uh, in the medicine situation. But in this scenario, as the main focus of yours is to explain the investigations and to address her concerns. So you should know your history must be focused. You are not supposed to ask each and everything. Just ask the relevant questions from all the parts that are really connected with this uh, scenario. For example, sexual history is really important. Immunization history is really, really, really important. All right. And then a few questions from the others as well, like one or two questions that you find relevancy. Because once you start to practice, you will know that what questions are related to the particular scenario and what questions are not. And the next word is OET. So here, because you are explaining the results, you can skip this part as well. If you don't want to mention observation, examination, testing, that's totally fine. But if you do mention, uh, it's totally fine. It's totally up to you. Because in this case, the main case is you are not assessing the patient. You are basically delivering the information you have from the previous visit. So it's totally up to your choice. All right. The next thing would be the management. But I think it's safe to just mention it. Even if they don't, they might not have any findings, still you will play on the safe side. So you can mention it like I just need to do your blood pressure pulse and I need to examine your abdomen and the pelvic area. And that's it. No need to find uh, mention any test because you have already done previously. Don't sound scripted. Now, what is the management here is you have to explain the results always. Make it a rule, always start with the good one and always engage the patient. So how you're not going to say, well, you create support results, this and you this and you have this. No, no, not this way. You have to be very professional and very and, and kind of friendly, a kind of a bit friendly as well. So what you're going to start is you are going to start with the good news. So the good news is, uh, Clara, is that a scan of your tummy shows that you are 12 weeks pregnant and the baby is completely fine. And that's a good news, actually. And uh, as you know, we have done some blood tests as well. And uh, you all, your all tests are absolutely fine. But the one test shows that you do not have antibiotics, uh, bodies to rubella infection. Are you following me? She will ask, like, what do you mean by this doctor? By that, I mean that you are at the risk of catching the rubella infection. It is one of the serious infections in the pregnancy. All right. And then she will ask further. Still, let her 
uh, you know, let her sink in this knowledge. Don't just like, uh, don't be very fast. Don't be very quick in, in, in uh, you know, explaining the results. Give, give her a space to sink in, sink in the knowledge. So always uh, the paper, I'll always use the very uh, easy language for the patient. So Clara, by doing actually, um, uh, according to your report shows that you are at the risk of catching rubella infection. Uh, now she will ask, what is rubella? Basically, rubella is actually a German measles that can cause rash and can cause serious damage to the baby if a pregnant female catches the infection within six weeks of pregnancy. And in your case, as you do not remember the, that you have vaccination done, so unfortunately, you are at the risk of getting rubella infection. And uh, then she will say, what am I supposed to do? Is it going to harm my baby? Well, Clara, unfortunately, yes, it can cause harm to your baby. Because if, this is, if the female get it before 16 weeks of pregnancy, it can cause harm. I'm really sorry for that. Okay, so so now you are checking my tone that I am using a very low tone and also I am sympathetic, sympathetic and empathic towards the patient when I'm explaining these things. All right, because that is something that is very concerning for the patient. So I should uh, uh, should be empathic when I'm explaining this thing. Then, then what she's gonna ask is like explain what you can do for her. Like first of all, it is not advisable to offer any MMR vaccination during the pregnancy. So we need you to watch out for infection. If you develop any rash, you need to seek immediate medical help and we may need to terminate your pregnancy, but the choice will remain yours. This is just, I'm discussing with you, so you should know that this infection is really, uh, if the person gets the infection during pregnancy, it is something that is serious. So we have to take it very seriously. Are you following me, Clara? Now, now her, her next question would be, how can I avoid the infection? Then you, you should, uh, this all the information that I have taken is actually it is from NHS side. So you should mention it. Yes, you can avoid the rubella infection. What you are supposed to do is wash your hands frequently, wash the fruits and vegetables well and eat thoroughly cooked meat. By doing this, for sure, you are going to avoid the infection. All right. If no, th that that's all that the patient can ask about the uh, any questions related to the rubella. That's it. Not more than this. That's it. If the the next question she might ask is, what are the symptoms of rubella? Then you can say low grade fever, headache, runny nose, red eyes. These are all the symptoms of this. And I can also give you a leaflet regarding the uh, detail, uh, uh, the, the regarding the details about the rubella. You can also read from these leaflets. All right, and then. Okay, then if the stem also says that the patient is RH negative blood, so to be on a safe side, to be a safe doctor, when you are even explaining about the RH negative blood test results with the patient, you have to mention here as well that I need to, I will discuss it with my seniors and um, I will also let you know if there is any plan and uh, right now what, uh, am I, what uh, I'm going to do is then you will be you will be doing according to the plan that you have mentioned so always in both of these situations always mention about the senior because this is something serious so you have to inform that you have to involve the seniors explain the thing on your own but also uh, tell her that you are also going to involve the senior so what you're going to do is explain the results that according to the results blood test done to check your blood group and the marker recess came uh, back negative it means that you have an a negative blood then explain it very well do you know, Clara, what is it? All right. So if you have a baby who has positive blood group or your body will form chemicals to fight the blood cells of the body. For example, if I say right here, antibodies, the person might not know. So it's always I will use the word chemicals to fight the blood cells of the body. This is likely to happen in the future pregnancies. So to prevent this from happening, what we need to do is we can start you on NTD medicine to stop your body from forming any substance that could destroy the baby's blood cells. Are you following me? Yeah, am I clear to you so far? You have to check the patient engagement as well. All right. And also mention right away, well, I'm also going to discuss it with my seniors and uh, I will also inform them. All right. So that's way what you are going to do is you are explaining the thing. You are getting the marks by explaining the whole scenario as well as but you are proving it that you are a safe doctor by involving the seniors. You are going to get good marks here. Then the next thing is, 
during the history, the patient might have given you some clues. For example, I'm an alcoholic doctor. I do recreational drugs doctor. I do not practice safe sex doctor. Then you have to address these concerns afterwards. Okay. So after the specific management or the long-term management, you are going to discuss the points that she has mentioned before, and that is not good for her health. Talk about the recreational drugs. That recreational drugs are not good for you and your child's health. So please avoid them. And also, as you have been doing it, you will need more more frequent follow-up appointment to assess for any problem because it can cause harm to the baby. Secondly, Clara, you told me that you drink alcohol and it is always better to stop to avoid using alcohol while being pregnant because it can cause some abnormalities in the babies. What do you think about that? All right. And then if she, for example, at that moment, if the patient says, all right, I want to quit alcohol, what can I do? then you can offer the alcohol anonymous groups. You will be discussing it in the future the sessions with the other teachers, but you should know that when Ever at any point a person raise a concern, even if you have you are left with the whole of your scenario, you have to address that concern. Do not never ever ignore the patient concerns. Because if you ignore the patient concerns, even if you complete the whole scenario in a time, they are not going to give you any mark. So you have to have a strong hold on your IPS. You should show that the, your whole consultation is patient-centered and you are not ignoring the patient concerns and you are not scripted. All right. So last but not the least, what you're going to do is you are going to give the leaflets, offer leaflets to the patient. Like here is a pregnancy book, Clara. You can have the whole information. You can read the whole stuff from the pregnancy book as well. And it will help you to manage with the symptoms, the early symptoms of pregnancy. And the safety netting, same for all the pregnant females headache, rash, bleeding, and also ask her to come to the emergency department if she develops any symptoms and also she can call 999 and follow up would be in one month time. So that is, uh, so these all the scenarios were from the uh, uh, the same, uh, like uh, follow up or antenatal visits. Now the third one is the preeclampsia. Actually, I want one of you people to please uh, unmute yourself and practice. People, if you do not practice that, the, uh, the session won't help you much. So please uh, unmute yourself. If anybody of you wants to practice, please do practice. Uh, Maida, can you hear me? Hello, Maida. Hello. Hello. How are you, Dr. Maida? Yeah. I can hear it. Yeah, can you can hear you. me. Uh, Alhamdulillah, I'm good. So you want to practice this? Yeah, I can hear clearly. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So let's start. Okay. 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 So read the stem loudly. Okay. You are a foundation year two doctor in the maternity assessment unit. Okay. 30 year old lady, Alice Smith, who has come from for routine antenatal follow up. She is 36 weeks pregnant. <laughs> Just 36. Keep you in your, in your mind 36. Next. Yeah. Yeah, 36 weeks pregnant. Um, she is, uh, she has been seen by the midwife who has made following note. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what's the note? Her blood pressure today is 160 over 110. Urine dipstick show protein plus plus plus. Her booking antenatal blood pressure is 110 over 70. Okay, take a focus history and discuss management with the patient. All right. All right, let's start. Okay, yeah. Uh -huh. So your time starts now, Maida. Okay, okay. Uh, hello, hello. I'm Dr. Maida. I'm one of the junior doctors in the department. Uh, please confirm me your name and age. Sure, my name is Alice Smith and I'm 30 years old. Okay, Alice, nice to meet you. Is that okay if I can call you Alice? Yeah, sure. Okay. Um, Alice, how can I help you today? Uh, well, I don't know, doctor. Actually, I'm here for my antenatal checkup and I have been told by one of your midwives that you are going to uh, to discuss with me something. I don't know. I'm, I was just here for the... Yeah. Okay. Alyssa, I understand that uh, your blood pressure uh, is recorded by our midwife and it was uh, a bit high. Uh, okay. So, all right. Okay. So... Yeah, uh, I would like to talk to you about it in detail, uh, but uh, before that, if I ask you some questions, is that okay? Sure. Okay, so Alice, did you experience any symptoms? Uh, well, yes, doctor, I was having headache for the last two days. 
Okay. All right. Uh, so uh, did it start uh, all of a sudden or were, was it gradual? Well, it started suddenly. Okay. I'm very sorry to hear that. Did you do anything about it? No. Yes, I do try it first of all, but it didn't, it didn't work. Okay. Okay. Don't worry. Uh, we will help you with that. Just mm -hmm. uh, shortly, I will ask you some questions and then I will give you the treatment to relieve your headache and your blood pressure. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay, so uh, Alice, you told me that your headache started two days ago, and uh, uh, did you uh, uh, did it, has it changed since it started? No, it's the same. Okay, and um, has it ever happened before? No, this is the very first time. Okay, and uh, is there anything that makes it better or anything that makes it worse? It's just it's been there for the last two days, doctor. I don't know much. I have not noticed anything that is making it worse. It is saying it's staying the same. Okay. Two days. Okay. 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 And uh, can you please uh, score your headache for me on a score of uh, one to ten, where one being the minimum headache and ten being the uh, maximum? It's seven out of ten. Okay. Okay. It must be very difficult for you. Uh, and uh, can you please tell me how has your pregnancy been so far? Well, it's uh, it's going well, doctor. I have been regular with my antenatal checkups. Okay, that's great. Yeah, I, uh, I understand that uh, uh, on your antenatal checkup, your blood pressure was uh, normal. Mm -hmm. So, and, um, okay. And did you experience any other symptoms, any pain anywhere else in your body? I do have swelling on the legs. Okay, all right. Since when? Uh, it's uh, started one week back. Okay, okay. And then did you do anything for that? No, doctor, nothing. Okay, don't worry. And has it changed since it started? No. Okay. And did you experience any discharge from your front passage? No, doctor. Not at all. Okay. Uh, all right. So, uh, Alex, um, uh, please tell me about your uh, general health. Like, do you have any medical conditions? No, doctor. Okay. And do you take any medications regularly or any oh, no. over-the-counter? No, I'm just taking supplements. Okay. That's it. Okay. okay. And uh, do you have any allergies? No, doctor. Okay. And by any chance, did you have any fever or any cough? No, no doctor. Okay. And did you hurt yourself? Uh, no. No. Okay, and do you have you ever been hosp hospitalized before? No. Any surgeries or uh, any procedures in the front passage done in the past? No, doctor. No. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much for answering my questions. I would like to ask you some more questions about your lifestyle. Um, do you smoke? No, doctor. Okay, that's good. And do you drink alcohol? No. And uh, how is your diet? Well, it's good. I eat healthy fruits and veggies. That's very good that you're taking good care of yourself. Uh, and how physical? How about your physical activity? Well, I'm physically active. I do exercise. All right. And um, uh, how do you live with? Well, I live with my husband. And how is your relationship with your husband? Well, it's very really good. He's very cooperative. Okay. That that's good. Uh, and um, I would also like to know about your sexual history. Um, so, um, how how is uh, have you ever been pregnant before? No, this is the first time. Okay, and uh, all right. So, and how? Uh, okay, so I would like to examine you now, uh, mm -hmm. if that's okay. Yes, definitely, doctor. Yeah, I would like to. Okay, I would like to do some general observations that includes mm -hmm. your measuring your blood pressure, pulse rate, respiratory rate, and temperature. I will okay. also do a head to toe examination and I will also examine your tummy and check right. for the gestational age. Okay, thank you. And I will also examine your leg for the swelling, okay? All right, okay. And okay, and I will also run, I would, I would also like to run some investigations that includes the uh, normal blood test and urine gestation. Okay. All right. So, uh, Dr. Maida, uh, kindly, uh, thank you so much that you have practiced and it was good. But the mistakes that you have done is yeah. 
mistakes that you did uh, yeah. uh actually, if anybody if anybody else can p- want to pinpoint it that's good otherwise uh, i would proceed or the mistake that you have done is uh, maida you have to be focused you have to be very focused if you do not okay. focus because there is a lot of questions that yeah. you that you will ask and you won't yeah. find time to explain the management and you won't find the time to address yeah. concerns so that's what going to make a difference mm-hmm. between the performance of yours and the performance of the others they okay. have asked okay. you to have yeah. the focused history so you don't need to go yeah. details of the headache you already understand okay. that must be going because you already know the diagnosis from the test results that the midwife has yeah. uh, provided you so you should be focused focus yeah. word all okay. the questions so take the history that is linked to the situation they have provided you in the stamp try to understand that then ask the question so okay. now ask is you are going to okay. phrase it because the midwife has already given you the note already this is not the first time that patient has came to you she has already been to the midwife and then she has given you the note so you have to paraphrase it that is what the ideal way is to start it all right you understand i understand that you have come for the routine follow up and midwife has checked your blood pressure and urine test has somebody explained the results to you that's where you are going to save your time actually maida otherwise it will take a bit longer to ask the patient what happened why you come and that's where you are not going to man- manage the time so always when you have the knowledge that the patient has been okay. to you and you have some results with you always paraphrase that's where you are going to save your seconds and then ask for the history okay. just a very 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 uh, focused okay. just a few questions is this your first pregnancy how is it going that's it nothing more uh, well uh, le- okay. let me ask you uh, how many babies do you have do you feel any kick of the baby these questions are really important here do you feel the kick of the baby how many times mm. and then the red flags of the preeclampsia even okay. if okay. the sexual history here it's so it's it's fine if i miss the sexual history here it's totally fine because the emergency is the pre mm-hmm. even if i miss these questions like mm-hmm. sexual and sexual it's fine all right so i have to be focused if, mm-hmm. if i need to ask i can ask just mm-hmm. questions like just one one question for me okay. category and then move forward now the next most important part is the red flag mm-hmm. of preeclampsia don't say do you have any other symptoms ask the focused questions mm-hmm. have headache because these are the red flags now so you have to pin mm-hmm. them do you have headache do you have bloody vein notice any mm-hmm. swelling in the leg do you have tummy pains okay right and then about the other like uh, mm-hmm. not uh, you don't need to ask about the diet you don't need to ask about the exercise this is an emergency so yeah. we can skip it what we cannot skip it is previous medical problem and taking any medications allergy to anything and the yeah. family history you miss the family history yeah. either actually yeah. you are not supposed to miss it the family is really oh, oh, yes. do you have do you have anyone yeah. in your family who has a okay. similar problem during pregnancy like blood pressure or uh, diabetes or the history of clot formation in the legs or the lungs do you have any such kind of family history she will answer that and then ask about smoking and alcohol as well and then just skip the other questions and then come towards the eyes. do you have any particular concern Now, are you uh, do you have uh, just one question to save your time and then you can um, just ask about examination that's it observations and the test has already been done by the midwife so you are so you don't need to do it you just need you to do examination that's it and you will just mention it the examiner will give you the finding and then the diagnosis now that diagnosis you will start with you have okay. symptoms the the you, you we have taken your blood pressure and your blood pressure is at this and on examination we have found that you have this so based on your sign and symptoms clara it seems like you have developed a condition that is pre eclampsia you have just take a few seconds for her to sink in the, in the information don't just throw the information are you with me clara she will ask what is it so just explain it well it is basically a common complication of pregnancy because of increase in the blood pressure and protein loss in the urine it is basically a potentially serious condition that can leads to a fit so your diagnosis or the situation you are explaining to the patient that must be very crystal clear and that must be very in the very simple words so you, so, so the patient don't need to ask what what you are saying doctor what do you mean by this because otherwise that's gonna waste your time so you should uh, use the very simple uh, language to explain it all right and then explain the okay okay but need we need to do is we need to admit you and i will discuss with the seniors just the, the, say these points in the very start that's gonna uh, uh, let you box here from in, in the very beginning while in the hospital stay mm-hmm. be monitored closely to determine how severe is the condition the only way to cure eclampsia preeclampsia is to deliver the baby so we will monitor you regularly until it's possible for you baby to be delivered are you following me this will normally be around 37 to 38 week but it can be 
earlier in more severe cases. And at this point, we might need to start artificially, like we may induce it or we may have a cesarean section with you. And also we might need to start you with some medications to lower your blood pressure. Don't need to take the name of the medicine that is not, no need to mention. You should just know for your own because the person might ask what medicine that you are supposed to uh, say the name. Otherwise, there is no need to say the name of the medicine because patients don't understand the names of the patient uh, medicine. So you don't need to mention it on your own. All right. And then just a kind of deliver like while in the hospital stay, you and your baby will be monitored. In this scenario, the management part is very important, Maida. So you, you have to save some uh, plenty of time for the management. Having regular blood yes. checks to identify the any, any abnormal uh, increases, having regular urine samples, having various blood tests done, and also ultrasounds time to time. And also we are going to check the baby's heart rates through cardiotopography. It is just to detect is there any baby, your baby is in stress or any kind of distress. Are you following me? And uh, Clara, we might need to start you on another medicine as well to prevent the fits because if the person is having preeclampsia they are always at the risk of developing the fits now because as you have asked the patient about the concern she might ask you before doctor i want to have a water bath so you are supposed to say that water bath is not recommended always keep this thing in mind water bath is not recommended in the preeclampsia and you have to mention that clara i'm really sorry to say but water bath is not recommended in your case as we have to monitor the baby and you are at the risk of to develop the fit so that is not suitable for you uh, all right and your tone must be very sympathetic because a patient might get disturbed doctor i was planning for the for for the months and you are saying that you can't do water uh, you can't offer me water but what you are saying why you are saying this they might get aggressive so you have to cool and calm them well i can understand that you have been planning for this but unfortunately as you have developed these symptoms and the results show that you have developed the preeclampsia state and this is something very serious that can put you and your baby's life on thread. So we have to monitor you. That's why we have to keep you in the hospital and we do cannot offer you water bath. All right. So you have to address the patient's concern in appropriate tone. Now, you all should know that the stem can uh, appear or they can give the uh, stem in three kind of situations. For example, they can mention the person is 34 weeks pregnant or 36 weeks pregnant or 38 weeks pregnant. You should know what the stem says and then your management would be, there would be a big change in your uh, management. For example, if the stem says she is 34 weeks, then you also have to mention one thing. That is, you have to mention the patient that we will observe you and we're going to deliver the baby at 37 to 38 weeks. Meanwhile, we will keep on monitoring you. And we also need to give you a medicine because you're uh, to mature or to make uh, to mature your baby's lungs because as you are 34 weeks and the baby's lungs um, do not mature enough at that level so that's why we have to give you some medicine so that your baby's lungs get mature all right so that you can mention the name of corticosteroid because every, everybody knows about the corticosteroids and even uk as well so you can mention that and also mention that you are going to deliver it on 37 to 38 weeks, but if the condition gets worse, we might deliver it earlier, as we have already discussed earlier in the paragraph I have read for you people. Then if the stem says 36 weeks, same monitoring or induction on cesarean at 37 to 38 weeks. But if the stem says the patient is 38 weeks, then you are not going to say that we will be uh, induced or labored at 37. You are just say, well, we need to admit you. We have to keep on monitoring you. We need to start you on medicine. Uh, we will start you on medicine to lower your blood pressure. And also we will deliver your baby within next 24 to 48 hours because the only treatment for preeclampsia is delivery of the baby. Are you following me, people? And at the end, do not offer the leaflets. When you are admitting the patient, there is no uh, point to uh, offer the leaflets. When the, you are admitting the patient, do not follow the uh, offer the leaflets and do not discuss about the follow because you are already admitting the patient. And whenever in any kind of scenario, you ask the patient that I need to admit you. There, in a lot of cases, patient might change their body language. Oh, why doctor? Oh my God, I don't want to get, you have to acknowledge that concern, Will. Uh, I need to admit you, is that okay for you? She might say, no, I don't want to get admit. You can ask, like, uh, can I ask why you why, why are you reluctant for that? She will. She might say that I do have kids to look after. Um, I don't have anyone to look after my kids. I have them at home. I don't know, I, so, so I can't stay. But you you have to find a solution for her concern. What you're gonna say is, 
well right now your child your and your child's health is our priority and what we can do right now we can offer an a temporary accommodation for your kids is that okay for you how does it sound all right and by saying this yeah, you will get good marks in ips and the patient will be happy and they will say all right yes okay then fine i'm i'm, I'm ready to get uh, admitted so these are some punch lines these are some things that you have to something that that no books are uh, going to teach you uh, these points you have to learn it on your own by doing practice on daily basis so what points you should know never ever ignore any body language or any verbal non verbal cues of the patient if the patient has showed some concern do not ignore it even if you you were in a strong pace of covering your all the questions uh, according to your task but if the patient has raised some concern leave everything address that concern or ask about that concern or show sympathy or empathy regarding to that concern that's where you are going to make a very big difference as compared to others honestly in my exam my strong hold was my ips i was good in management and i uh, history taking as well but still the my strong hold was my ips and uh, that's really helped me a lot and they, that has saved me a lot in a lot of situation a lot of cases to so have a good hold on your ips because you never know sometimes the situation says uh, changes and sometimes we might get uh, a very different case this is not usually happens but in rare cases you might get one or two new cases so you should be uh, you should know that you should have some strong hold uh the strong goals that gonna help in the new cases would be the approach that you will follow do not uh, skip do not ignore the structure always be in the structure like like the structure that dr hamid has discussed with you history taking that way you are you will ultimately reach to some point of diagnosis and then your ips okay now the next is preconception scenarios now all right so what is the preconception scenario this is basically the scenarios the patient is not pregnant and they will come to ask that they want to get pregnant so there are basically two kind of scenarios that falls in that category first of all let me discuss the approach with you people it is the, the mnemonic is pms cs so it is basically the preconception cases will come and what you are supposed to ask is the pregnancy history like have you been pregnant before have you if she has been pregnant before how were they any complication was there in the pregnancy and how did it end a few questions that's it if she had a miscarriage ask a few questions about the miscarriage how was it how how did it happen what you have been told about that and if she was not pregnant because she is the preconception scenarios will always be something that the patient will come and ask that i want to get pregnant um she she will not have any infertility issue but you will say want to get pregnant but i have this concern all right so you have to address that so you should learn the approach the approach would be ask about the pregnancy history like if she first time if has been pregnant before how was it just a few questions then if she was not pregnant before have you tried before to get pregnant what did you do and did it work all right then menstrual history here this is really important because you have to check if she is fertile or not still you will ask about the lmp the menstrual cycle regular or irregular how many days do you bleed and do you have painful periods by that i means i want to rule out my uh, 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 pcos all right and then the sexual history here is also important in the pregnant and the preconception scenario sexual history is always important because she is planning to get pregnant so we we have to be on a safe side that if she is fine to get pregnant because if she is having some kind of torch infections or have a tendency to get the infections this might be uh, have a very bad outcome regarding her delivery of the baby so sexual history is also important so are you in a stable relationship is if yes okay if she is not in a stable relationship how many partners do you have is your partner male or female but um uh, uh, do you practice safe sex and by that i means do you use condom and then never uh, ignore vaginal discharge or sti history of her previously and then contraception because as you know once the patient is on the contraception it might takes a bit longer to conceive so you have to ask are you have you used any contraception which kind of contraception are you using and for how many times now the new thing here is socio economic not the socio economic but it is only uh, social right now i am not amended but it is only social history would be there like you will ask can i ask why you thought of a like uh, my tone is a bit higher you should uh, speak a bit low um can i ask why you thought of a child now are you under any kind of pressure whom do you live with how is your husband with you Uh, he's is he putting any kind of pressure on you because you have to know that the person has came and she wants to conceive you should to be on a safe side to prove that you are a safe doctor you have to prove you have to say that if she is any 
under any kind of pressure. Then you will cover the other history questions. Not all, you don't need to ask all the questions, just the relevant questions like family history, previous medical problem, smoking and alcohol history. That is what, that, that's enough here. All right. And the further, if, OET like observation examination test will depend on the scenario or the case if it is required or not. All right, so let's discuss the stations here. The only there are the only two stations that fall in this category. The first one is the hypertensive on remipril preconception. So here you want to the scenario is you are FY twin GP surgery. The Mrs. Uh, uh, Amy Travis, aged 52, has come to see you. She is on remipril for her hypertension and talk to her and address her concern. The patient info, she would like to get pregnant and has a high BP and takes ramipril, does not drink alcohol, does not smoke, so she is safe. Diet is healthy. You want to know if you need to change medicine. So, doctor, any advice for me? I am 42 years old. Do you think this will be my chance of getting pregnant? So, what you gonna, how are you going to start it? The doctor, the when you will, the same approach would be here. You will introduce yourself. Whenever you say hello, let the other person reply. Hello, doctor. So then uh, introduce yourself, you're having a very smiley face and then ask, how can I help you? Then she will tell that I want to get pregnant. And, uh, but still uh, I am, uh, I'm high, I has a high, I have a high BP and do I need to take my medicines then? You, what you are going to do is you are going to follow a different approach. First of all, because she had the first thing is, in her life is she's having hypertension. You have to ask a few questions about the hypertension. That is very clear. So you have to ask about like when you were diagnosed with hypertension, are you taking any regular medication? Which one is, is it well controlled and who has started you on this medication that this, I have missed this question. This question is also very important. I will uh, let you know at the end why is this question will important because this will help you in other scenarios as well. So who has started you on this medicine and then ask, a few, uh, few ask about all the other histories like obstetric history have you been pregnant before that we have discussed earlier if she was pregnant before what was the outcome and how did it went and if she was not has she tried anything before to get pregnant and what she has been doing and then the menstrual history the sexual history the contraception history and the social history that is really important here you have to exclude the risk factors or, or the any threats to her life that if she is doing it on her own or she has any kind of pressure so you can help her in this regard to prove that you are a safe doctor and then you will cover all the other questions of yours all right so here or you will do, you can do OET, OET or, or, or for like, you will say that I need to check your blood pressure because this is the first time she is hypertensive. You have to make sure either she's right now, she is having high blood pressure right now or not, or she's fine. You have to ask, well, I need to check your blood pressure, pulse temperature and respiratory rate. Also, I need to examine you. I will do your general physical examination because in this, we just need to do GPE because she's not pregnant right now. No? So I can, we can just do GPE. And uh, uh, and also I need to test, uh, take same, uh, I need to do some tests, including the pregnancy test right now and urine dipstick as well, because she is hypertensive. So she might have some nephropathy as well. So we have to do both of tests. So just mention it that I need to do pregnancy test as well as a urine dipstick to check that if she is already pregnant or not, and then explain the management. All right. So when you're going to start with the management, you should know. For your knowledge that ramipril patients are not allowed to take ramipril while being pregnant. So you have to explain it. Well, always start with a positive reinforcement, reinforcement because that will have a very good impression on the interlocutor. Because, you know, the, the, the interlocutors have also been told that if the other person, um, uh, like if he is very well explaining you the things and he is, if he is asking you to agree to some point, if they explained very well, then you should agree at some moment. All right. So you should always have some impressive way. So always use the positive reinforcement first. That I'm really glad that you're not smoking or drinking, Clara. And as you have told me that you are taking Remipril for high blood pressure, I need to refer you to the gynae and obstetric specialist first. So they will decide about this medication because you have had blood pressure for the last dash years and you are taking Remipril. And it is not safe uh, to, uh, to, 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 to take this medicine while being pregnant because it can affect your baby. Are you following me? One thing more I want to add here, until you see, you are seen by the specialist, please do not stop using contraceptives. This, this point is really important here, people. You have to explain that you are going to refer her, routine referral to the, uh, uh, the uh, specialist. And then uh, you have to mention that do not stop taking contraceptives. Otherwise, you might have bad outcome. And then you 
have to uh, because she is planning to be on a safe side you will run some tests well still you are planning so to get pregnant so just to be on a safe side yeah or for your for your future baby's well-being i need to run some tests including your routine blood tests just test for screen you some infections and some ultrasound abdomen is that uh, how does it sounds all right and then advise her to start folic acid and give her the pregnancy book as the leaflet well clara here is the pregnancy book and you will uh, this will have all the information about the pregnancy and how to deal with the mild symptoms is to how is it okay for you all right and then she might have discussed the concern before but if she haven't you can ask like do you have any anything you want to ask clara so she might say well i'm 42 years old doctor you think this is my chance of getting pregnant and you have to well clara um your age does not reduce the chance of getting pregnant if everything is fine all right uh, so should just so, you, so you, but still i would recommend you that have a follow-up have a, a checkup with the uh, specialist and then they will decide they might switch you on some other medicine according to your situation and then uh, uh, stop using contraceptives before discussing with them do not do it because that that way you might have that might affect you in a bad way so i don't want this to happen to you are you following me all right and then discuss about the follow-up because you have ordered all the blood tests so you are going to call her follow-up after one week all right now, um, yeah, and if she asked about the same that previously the patient discussed, like, I have two miscarriages, doctor, already. Uh, what what do you think? Is it going to reduce the chance of me getting pregnant? If you, you can answer the same as we have discussed previously, that having two miscarriages does not put you on the risk of the third miscarriage. So right now, you don't need to worry about it. You have equal chance of getting pregnant, all right? And your tone must be very sympathetic and empathic as towards it. Now, the next thing is, the next scenario is that is totally different. And that is some kind of new for, for a few people who have already appeared in the exam. That is kind of a bit different. So this is the scenario where a person has will come to you and she has uh, she has already a few kids and she wants a male child now. All right, this is very different scenario. So you, the, the, but the approach would be same. So you are referred to GP surgery. A 36-year-old made an urgent appointment, non-urgent appointment to see you. She has three daughters currently taking COCPs. Talk to the patient and address her concern. Now the patient info is you have come to see the doctor because you want to have a fourth child. Your husband wants a male child. Now the questions are if I get pregnant and find out it's a girl, can I get an abortion? I heard that having sex in the standing position can have a baby. Is it true? My sister has got the cancer. Can I terminate pregnancy because of this reason? I find out that it's a baby girl. Can I terminate the pregnancy on this ground? So these all the questions are the answer you should already aware of. Okay. So start will be the same. Uh, introduce yourself. Now she will say directly, well, doctor, I want to have a fourth child, but I want to have a male uh, baby. Then ask about the history. Well, can I ask why you want a, first of all, start with the other kids history. Do you have any other children? How many kids do you have? How many of them are males or females? Like, look, people, that's where you, you will not sound scripted. But if you follow the scheme, like, uh, how can I help you? Do you have any symptom, HOPI? The, these things do not fit in these scenarios so you don't need sound to need to be scripted you have to follow like logically use your brain and think that according to this scenario as a doctor i must have asked a few questions about his her already present child like why she wants a male child first now so uh, my, my first concern is why she wants a male child so i have to ask this how many childs do you have how many um, how many of them are males and female are you finding it difficult to cope with them then ask why you want a male child and then ask about her social history here is very important. Are you married? Is your partner male or female? If she says that, yes, I do have a husband in 99% of cases, she will say that, yes, uh, I have a male husband and uh, he, he lives with me. And then ask about how is this behavior towards you? How is his behavior with the other kids? Has he put some pressure on you to have the male child? This sentence, for example, you have to ask this question in a different way. For example, you can say, uh, just to, to be on a safe side and to just get the information out of the patient's mouth, you can say, well, I have seen uh, in my general practice that a few, a, a few females came to us and wants to have a male child because they have a certain pressure from their partners. Is, is it the case in your, is it the situation in your case as well, Clara? You can share with me. Okay, and this is this way you are going to ask the question because in this way you are also going to cover the IPS as well as history part. So 
and also then ask about the previous attempts that you have you ha tried before to have a male child what did you try and if you have tried where did you find it like what was the source of that information all right and then a few questions because she is planning to get pregnant you have to make sure that if she is safe to get pregnant so you should take the obstetric history like uh like if she has any miscarriages what was the cause the menstrual history just uh, one question is it regular or irregular um and the last pm sorry and the sexual history important here of all the questions that do you perform safe sex have you had any previous sexual transmitted infection any discharge from your vagina and contraception are you using any contraceptives right now and a few questions from the pre uh, from the other histories pmmaho family the the very important pinpoint questions not all the questions are necessary here and then you can ask about the because she has already explained the concern you can say is there anything else that important that you want to discuss with me or do you have any other concern all right and then you need to examine her like mention the observations mention the examination that is i would like to examine your abdominal and pelvic examination and also you do the pregnancy test here you don't need to do urine dipstick here just pregnancy test here okay and then explain explain it to the patient well if your your words be uh, very uh, conscious with your words you are choosing to explain the patient because this case is really sensitive case you have to be very 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 cautious the words you are using with the patient well if you are trying well clara on examination on observation you are like you will say the uh, uh, on observation your blood pressure pulse is absolutely fine and examination findings everything is good uh, and your pregnancy test is negative it was just to make sure uh, that you are not pregnant and if you are trying to get pregnant naturally clara there is a 50% chance of having a baby boy and a 50% chance of having a baby girl and there is no way to terminate the sex of the to determine the sex of the next pregnancy and unfortunately there are no measures that can help you to conceive a male child so in just four lines you have answered a, a lot of questions of her that she has previously the concerns now now she will ask about the now clara do you want to ask anything then she will ask about the the standing posture you will say there uh, i'm sorry clara but these are the myths the standing posture does not help to conceive the baby boy you should your conversation must be non judgmental you are not supposed to judge the patient okay okay so next question would be if i get pregnant and find out it's a girl can i get abortion say well abortion is allowed in the uk clara but it requires a valid reason you can't have an abortion based on the gender you need psychological or medical reasons to get an abortion are you getting me yeah am i clear to you so far then she might argue with doctor i have a uh, sister who has a breast cancer can i terminate my pregnancy because of that you know but worst you need first of all because she has mentioned something very serious happening in her life you have to be sorry for that first of all this is what ips comes i am sorry to hear about your sister having a family remember with the cancer is a very big issue but this is not a valid reason to terminate your pregnancy how is your sister now how is she doing all right so that's way uh, you are making good points regarding ips and then what now you will discuss the management like why don't you discuss it like give her no solutions why don't you discuss it with your husband and explain to him that it is okay to have a baby girl i can also refer you and your husband for the counseling session and if she says right now that okay doctor i'm okay to have a normal female child then talk about the folic acid the other stuff that we have discussed in the first antenatal visit like tell her that you need to start on the folic acid and uh, stop taking the contraceptives if she has already taken and mention the investigations that you need to do like routine blood tests screening for the infections and ultrasound abdomen all right and then offer the leaflets regarding the pregnancy and and ask her that once you discuss with your husband we can have another meeting to discuss further steps how does it sounds all right this is what uh, it goes so any one of you we are just left with the two more scenarios so any one of you wants to practice on the preconception cases people i want one of you to practice the preconception wants male child because that is a, a very tricky uh, uh, one so any one of you wants to practice hera ali hello dr hera yes ma'am uh as a doctor dr hera do you want to practice this uh, case preconception yeah sure ma'am sure right. ma'am all right so yeah, here you go let me just start your timer uh all right again enter the room all right uh, uh hera your time starts now okay uh hello how are you hello doctor i am good 
my name is Dr. Hira Ali. I'm one of the junior doctors here. Can I know your full name, please? Sure. My name is uh, Amelie Jones and uh, my age is 36, actually. Okay. And what would you like me to call you? Hey, uh, you can call me Mrs. Jones. Okay. Nice meeting you, Mrs. Jones. Same here. Uh, how can I help you today? Uh, well, actually, doctor, I actually I have uh, four kids before and I just want to get pregnant for the first time and I want to have a male child. That's why I'm here. Okay, so is that your first visit? Uh, yes, this is this is the first time. Actually, I want to get pregnant. Okay, I'm, I'm, it's great that you want to get pregnant again. But uh, you told me that you have three, uh, three children before and you want a uh, male child before. Um, you want a male child now. Can I know yes. the reason? Well, um, there is no a big reason or there's nothing. Just I just, me and my husband just want a male child now. We just want to have a male all right. So, uh, can I uh, can I ask you a few questions, please? Sure. Do you live with your husband? Yes, I do. And how's your relationship? Well, he's very cooperative. He's he's very loving. Okay, that's good. Uh, but how's uh, how's behavior with your other children? Well, uh, he he really loves the other kids. He's very good with them. Okay. And does he want a male child specifically? Uh, as I have already mentioned, doctor, me and my husband, we have collectively made this decision that we want to have a male child now uh, because we, we have three girls already. So that's why we want male child now. All right. So uh, that's a decision of both of you. Right. So have you tried any, uh, have you tried to conceive? Are you uh, taking any contraception? Yes, I am right now. I'm on contraceptive pills. All right. And have you, uh, are you taking any medication? No. Okay. Any allergies to any medication? No, doctor. Have you been, how was your previous pregnancy? Can I ask about that? Uh, well, the uh, that the whole of my three, all the four pregnancies previously were that delivered normal vaginally and there was no complication. Everything was fine. All right. Um, and any any miscarriages in the past? No. All right. So um, you told me you're still on contraceptions. Yes, doctor. All right. Um, can so I, I just know want you? Sure. Yes. Well, I just want yes, to discuss. Yes. This, is there something that can help us to conceive male male baby, or is there something that we can just find out the sex of the baby? Yeah. Uh, well, uh, uh, Mrs. Jones, unfortunately, there's nothing uh, we can do uh, to determine your the gender of the baby before you mm -hmm. conceive. Um, whether it's a male child or a female child, that that will be known after you conceive. Oh, okay. And yeah, so uh, we can't do anything about that. But yeah, if you're happy to conceive, then we can help you regarding that. We can put you off the contraceptive pills and we, we can start taking you uh, multivitamins and folic acid so that you have a good outcome of pregnancy. All right. But why can't I have a male baby? Like, is there something, something, some technological thing or some steps that we can do, any procedure that we can have a male child, doctor? That is really uh, for me. Yeah, uh, we can uh, we can discuss it with the seniors. Mm -hmm. I can refer you to, to the gynecologist. Maybe she can run a few tests in which she can refer you for uh, in vitro fertilization. But that's a really long run. So uh, if you want to have that, we can do that for you. Uh, okay, all right. So, uh, okay, doctor. So, um. If I I've heard that uh, ha I have heard that having sex in a standing position can have a baby, is it true? We can have a baby boy. Is it true? No, unfortunately, that's not. Uh, that's a myth. Um, no position can determine the gender of your baby. That's all, right. all myth. Okay, so once I get pregnant and I know that she that the baby is female, and can I get an abortion? 
uh, I'm so sorry that that uh, that can't be done. Like um, abortion is legal in UK, but that mm -hmm. can't be um, uh, because of you having a female child. Uh, you have to have a valid reason, a medical or psychological reason in order to proceed with the abortion. Oh, okay. So actually, doctor, I have a family history. My, my sister is having has got breast cancer. Can I terminate the pregnancy on these grounds? Um, I'm, I'm really sorry to hear about your sister. Is she all right now? Well, she is on chemotherapy. She's not fine. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I know it must be really um, difficult for you, but uh, unfortunately, it's not a valid reason for you to get an abortion. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, doctor. Yes. So okay. I hope you, uh, you're you with me and um, you're understanding what I'm trying to tell you. Uh, uh, yes. If you have any concerns or questions, you can always ask me. What I would advise you at this stage is, is to go and discuss it with your uh, partner, have a discussion with him, explain whatever I have told you. And then if you if you want to discuss and come with uh, come and discuss with me again. You can, you're always welcome. I can arrange a, um, um, I can arrange a session for you, and you can always come. And if you're happy to conceive, mm -hmm. uh, we're here to help you. Don't worry about that. All right. Okay. Thank you, doctor. Thank you so much. Thank you. All Thank right. You. So, uh, doctor Hera, it was good, but which mistakes? Uh, there were a few mistakes that you have to note. For example, when you started, you started to ask a few questions then you ask me like can i ask a few more questions so just save your time and just say in the very start let me ask a few questions first or just say in the start can i ask a few questions further and then go and ask the question you don't need to ask again and again to ask the information okay that's where you're going to say okay. there's a bit problem with yours like there's a bit uh a bit uh the, like you should have a uh, uh you can say a sequence in your mind otherwise this the, the uh, like the sequence might go haphazard and that won't sound good so you have to have a sequence for example i'm just uh, unable to recall the what you have said but you like you have just haphazardly asked few questions like you have just mixed the two portions you have to be in a very good sequence and your tone was good uh your previous attempts you have asked that that was also good but what you haven't asked me is uh, uh am i having difficulty in coping with them like with the other kids because this question okay. is something important here. And uh, mm -hmm. then you have asked uh, obstetric, menstrual history, you skip. Sexual history, you also skip. You need to ask about the sexual history because this female is going to get pregnant and you have to make sure that she has the risk of something, like some infection. So you should have asked about the sexual history at first. And uh, you have asked about the contraception. You're, um, all right. So you do not ask about the concerns. Have you asked about my concerns? No. So you have to you have to ask that because today I was actively participating, like I was putting my question forward, but in the real exam, the interlocutor might not ask you a question until and unless you ask him to uh, say, like, do you have any concern? So it's make it a heavy of yours to ask always. All right. And you also missed uh, the test, like urine dipstick, uh, all right, do not urine dipstick pregnancy test. You have to do pregnancy test, all right, because she this is her okay. still she might be pregnant. And then, uh, the, all right, so once you said that I can refer you to the gynecology and ops department or the, uh, and she, uh, you can have in vitro fertilization uh, to, no, the, uh, there is nothing that can work to have a male child. That's what okay. I, so there's a, uh, in a few notes, this line has been mentioned, but that is wrong. That is not right. All right. So you should be very clear. You should have very clear to the patient. Don't give the false information to the patient or just be very clear that it is not important. That That is not possible, actually. In every situation, you are going to have 50% chance of having a baby boy and 50% chance of having a girl. All right. And uh, mm -hmm. your, your tone is good. Your speed is good. Your IPS is good. Uh, just do practice more and more. And... Uh, uh, just uh, read just keep the sequence in your mind so that you do not skip the important questions during the history taking okay so it was good okay i know uh, thank you. Is your thank exam? You. when is your exam welcome 31st january all right one more thing here you should also give her the solution for example she and her husband are consistent on uh, getting a baby you can ask them that i can refer you to uh because first of all discuss it with your husband explain to him that it is okay to have a baby girl otherwise if you say i can also refer you for the counseling session i you will and they they will discuss with you different things and you might feel change in your mind you might change your mind what do you say okay ma'am 
so always give the solution to the patient concern that said but it was good okay. so next is the chicken pox exposure in the pregnancy um okay so this is the very simple case people uh, you are an fy2 in gp surgery amily peterson 30 year old has made an appointment to see you talk to the patient address her concern all right and um, uh, you are 37 weeks pregnant and you, you uh, your 3 year old boy joshua was diagnosed with chicken pox yesterday he had a fever generally not feeling well you are worried you are generally fit and had chicken pox as your child and your child is up to the date with his vaccination questions can i touch my son joshua is it going to affect my baby i am carrying so these are the question patient going to ask now any one of you wants to practice that with me because this is very simple case and uh, anybody wants to discuss otherwise i will do it on my own people anybody of you wants to practice i think no one so okay so this is the simple case you will say the same like grips greet the patient with having a very smiley face introduce yourself and ask how can i help you then she she will mention the doctor i am pregnant and uh, my baby i uh, but my baby got chicken pox and i have been in contact with him so i am concerned that i might it might affect my pregnancy so the first problem is the chicken pox before moving towards anything else ask about the chicken pox um all right first of all i'm really sorry to hear that uh, emily what symptoms does your child have does he have rash or fever how is he now now ask about the female herself because you are asking here how is he now by doing this you are actually covering the um, point of rapo building and ips do you, you will say do you have chicken pox in your childhood because that is really important if the person is pregnant and she has exposure to the chicken pox we should know that if she has a previous history of chicken pox or not so do you have chicken pox in your childhood do you have any symptoms like fever or rash and have you received childhood vaccination this question if you miss that during your practice during your uh, exam th that would be a great blunder on your behalf okay so don't miss these questions and then the same history will go like you will ask about the current pregnancy the symptoms the the eclampsia symptoms as well because to be on a safe side like if she is having any problem baby welping you will ask menstrual history just one question sexual history just two questions like do you are you in a stable relationship have you been performing the safe sex have you had any previous history of sexual transmitted infection or any other rash history and then about the pma hr family just a few questions that are relevant relevant to this like uh, family history previous medical problem any medications and then uh, smoking and alcohol and then you will ask about the eyes like you will see say that do you have any particular concern because by this way you will save your time because if the patient has a few questions to ask they might ask the same at this moment and then in this way you will save you will play safe on your side because that's where you will know that what concerns you need to answer and you will also cover your ips in the very start and then here general you will do general physical examination you will say that i need to take your blood pressure pulse temperature respiratory rate and also i need to examine you and abdominal examination as well why examination is important here you still have to see on your own that if she is having any rash elsewhere or not all right no investigation is required right away now the management is start from explaining the observations and the examination if the examiner provide you because in this scenario they will not ask you to do uh, perform examination on your own they if you mention that they will provide you with the findings so explain the findings then explain the situation that you don't need to worry since you had child uh, po uh, chicken pox as a child so you are unlikely to suffer from it again once a person had a chicken pox their body produces chemicals that protect them from the future infections they become immune Uh, is it okay for you? Are you or oh, sorry? Are you following me? Then she will ask, "Is it going to affect my baby?" Then explain it in a very well, in a low tone, and in the in the in a way that the patient will be able to understand your point. Even if you get the chicken pox, it is not going to affect your baby because you are already thirty seven weeks pregnant and his organs has already formed. If the baby was to be affected, the baby would be born with the chicken pox and he will be treated. There will be no structural abnormalities because your pregnancy is more than thirty six weeks. are you following me and also you can touch your baby that is totally fine now also because this condition is a bit uh, bit important you have to inform the senior cells will offer her the relief letters about the pregnancy and also say that it's it contains all the information re related to the chicken pox in pregnancy as well and also safety net if you develop any fever any rash and also mention the preeclampsia uh, um, symptoms as well if you develop any fever any rash any tummy pain swelling in the legs bloody vein or any blood 
from your vagina or your front passage, just come to us immediately or call 999, okay? Now, here you have to be very vigilant because sometimes they won't give you the same stem. They might uh, bring a bit change in the exam. For example, they might say that patient has not had any uh, history of chicken pork. So the scenario will be different. You have to have modify your management. Then the management would be what? If the patient says that I don't have a previous history of chicken pox, then you will say that we need to run some tests. That is very similar zostro immunoglobulin test. It is basically a test that we will do to check if you have certain chemicals in your body to protect you from the chicken pox or not. The results will be back in two days. And if it is positive, that means you are immune. That is, you are not going, you are not at the risk of getting the chicken pox, and we don't need to do anything at that moment. But if the test comes out to be negative, I will need to refer you to the obstetric specialist and they will start you on the uh, on the on, on some medicine to protect you against the chicken pox. All right, so based on the STEM, words about the STEM says, what the situation says, my management would be a bit different, all right? And uh, same, if we don't need to do anything, there is no need for follow-up. But if uh, we are going to refer her and we are going to send the test for varicella zoster immunoglobulin, you are going to call her for the follow-up after two days. Okay, people? Now, the next is vomiting in a 17 year. Okay, so if you have any question up till now, you can ask people and if somebody wants to practice, do let me know. I think I have cleared uh, everything here to you. So in this scenario, the safety netting is very important. The history of previous chicken pox history and the immunization history is really important in this patient. And also the regarding the management point, your management would be different um, uh, according to the her scenario situation that if she has chicken pox previously or not. And the where the IPS will come, IPS will come here when uh, the, uh, the 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 she is discussing with you about her kid, and you have to feel sorry about her kid, and you have to ask a few questions about her kid as well. So so where the strong IPS comes. Okay, so now moving towards our next scenario, that is a vomiting in the seventeen year old girl. It is basically a simple uh, medicine based scenario, but still you have to. We are covering it here because the female is pregnant. Actually, in this time. The 70, they will say you are in effort to an emergency department, take the history, assess the patient and discuss the management. This, this is basically a scenario in which when, once you start taking the uh, history, the once you reach to the sexual history uh, uh, part, then you will come to know about the diagnosis because vomiting scenarios are very, um, very much in your syllabus. So, so, so you have to so the only way to reach the proper diagnosis in these kind of scenarios is to follow the scheme. So what is the scheme? The patient will come to me, I will do the grips, like data gathering, I will do the grips, like same, uh, greet with the having a smile on her face, be confident, introduce yourself and ask, how can I help you? you she will say, doctor, I'm having vomiting. Uh, and then ask about the vomiting questions. There are typical questions for the vomiting, like when did it start? How do you vomit? How often do you vomit? What is the amount of the vomitus? Is it cup full or glass full? That is really important. What is the color of the vomitus? It is, is it getting worse over the period of time? Is there anything that brings it up? Like I hear I'm born to ask about the association with the food. Or is there anything that makes you feel better? Now, regarding the vomiting, if in, in the very beginning, I already know that oh, this scenario is related to the female who, who will be pregnant. And I will uh, start from the sexual history. I will sound scripted and the examiner will fail me. So I need not to be sound scripted. So that's why I will start for follow the proper protocol. What is it? HOPI and then ask about the DD. Start from the very commonest gastroenteritis, appendicitis, pancreatitis. For this, what you're going to ask is, do you have feel nauseating? Do you have diarrhea? She's not having any diarrhea. Gastro is ruled out. Then, do you have any tummy pain? She is not having any tummy pain, appendicitis, pancreatitis ruled out. Then, ask about the UTI symptoms. Do you feel pain or burning while passing the urine? All right. And then, she will not have that UTI rule out. Then, you have to rule out the PID as well. Ask about the lower abdominal pain or discharge from the front passage. Okay. By this way, in just one minute uh, case, you will rule out all the other things. And then, red flags. Whenever the patient is having vomiting, the red flags are meningitis so you have to ask about the headache the shyness from the light and also ask about the other red flags as do you have any weight loss have you noticed any blood in the vomitus 
Then if I have not found anything in the other DDs, I am going to ask about the pregnancy history now. Then now what comes in the pregnancy history, the sexual history? I will ask, are you sexually active? All right. And uh, how many partners are you in a stable relationship? How many partners do you have? All right. Do you perform the safe sex? And what is what route do you prefer? I will ask this, these questions then. By doing this, I have reached to some point, okay, she's 17 years old, but she is sexually active. That means she might be pregnant. That I'm going to ask about that contraception history. As you are sexually active, are you using any contraceptions? Okay. If she is using any contraception, ask about the details. Which contraception and for how long? If she is not using it, then it's fine. Then... Uh, if she is not using contraception, you can ask, can I ask why you don't use contraception? You can ask here because that would also play a point in uh, in your IPS because you are showing concern about her health. Then you will ask about the menstrual history. Like when was your last LMP and are your periods regular or irregular? These two question, questions are really, really, really important here, people. The sexual history, the contraception history and the menstrual history uh, regarding these two questions like last LMP and the periods irregular or regular. All right. So these, this is actually the main uh you can say crux of the of, of the whole case so you you should so, so you need not to miss anything from here then you can you know ask a few questions about the uh, rest of the history just a few three to four questions then here because the you are in emergency department patient the concern you have to ask about the concern well clara do you have any concern yeah do you have anything you want to discuss with me anything important all right and then you will come to the obe same blood pressure pulse temperature respiratory abdominal and pelvic examination and the pregnancy test is very important here if you do not mention the pregnancy test examiner is not going to give you any pregnancy test findings and if they don't give you pregnancy findings you won't know so in every female who comes to you any of any child any age comes to you with the vomiting you have to do the pregnancy test uh, uh, you have to take the history of her sex, sex life and also you have to do the pregnancy test otherwise you won't be able to reach the diagnosis okay so then explain the diagnosis your tone must be ideal and uh, one thing more during the history when you were asking about the sexual history the contraception the menstrual history you should have also asked can i ask um uh, do you have you informed your family about that? Yeah. Do you your do your partner uh, parents know about that? Because that is important. She is just seventeen. So by having non judgmental speech, we have to ask this as well. All right. And if she says no, my parents do not know that. You you, you need to ask that. Can I ask why? Because these all things are going to help you in the management plan. Now, what's the management is? You will explain it that we have examined you, ex explain the findings. We did a pregnancy test and it is positive. You have been vomiting because you are pregnant. Just let, let's just sink in the information. Okay, just take a bit gap and then explain it. Now, what we need to do is we need to run some tests, including routine blood test, your ultrasound. And now... You, according to the scenario, you are going to mention the further details. If the patient is vitally stable, according to the findings, but you can say, you can say now you can go home uh, and I'm going to start you on, um, uh, on, on some medicines that will help to relieve your vomiting and try to take more fluids and avoid the fluids, foods that triggers uh, your vomiting. And also, I would recommend you to discuss with your parents and the partner as well. Because at this point, you might need some support, some some uh, uh, emotional support as well. So, so I would advise you to discuss it with it. How does it sound to you? How, how, what do you think about that? All right, you have to, uh, you have to offer him an option uh, to her uh, problems. And then also uh, ask like if she's okay with that. And if the parent patient is unstable, she's vitally unstable, then what would your CN would be? You will say, I need to admit you. I'll discuss it with my seniors. I need to start you on the fluids and we will give it through your IV line. And also I will start you on anti-sickness medications to control your vomiting. So based on the scenario, if the patient is unstable, I'm not going to send him home. I need to admit him. But if the patient is stable, I can send him home. All right. And on the oral medication. So based on the stem, my management will be different. Now, also, address her concerns if she has. I mean, for example, she will say that, will my parents come to know? You should have explained, well, Clara, 
uh, you are in the safe hands and uh, we we as a doctor we always maintains the privacy of our patient and it's your decision that if you want to disclose this information with your parents and not uh, without your consent your information will remain confidential all right so you have to explain it in a very well way in a very in a very um, in a very good tone otherwise no clara you uh, your information would be uh, confidential and we won't share it with you no this is not the way to deliver this information everybody along with you who gonna appear in the lab exam are going to deliver the same information the only way that is going to make a difference is how are you delivering your information to the patient and how easy he is with you all right and how non judgmental you are so that is really important to have that because i know like this is not a mistake uh, normally the way we talk or the way we deal with the patient is is not uh, like like normally our tone is high and we normally do it but for the exam purpose we have to have control have a low tone while dealing with the patient and we have to be showing that we are not in a judgmental tone all right and for this what we can do is we can work on our tone we have to work on our face expression your face expression must be good it that would be non judgmental or right? because, because during the exam examiner is observing each and everything of yours each and everything of yours so you have to be um a very uh, conscious about all the stuff okay so last but not the least you will ask her to discuss with the family as well as with the partner so you will say that as i have already mentioned that um but still i would recommend you that you should discuss it with your family and the partner because as the pregnancy will uh, will uh, will will move will go forward you are going to have a few symptoms so uh, you need you might need some support so you have to dis you need to discuss it don't have to don't use that word you need to discuss it with the your partners and they will be supportive towards you okay then talk about the safety netting like if if you develop severe vomiting you are not unable to drink or eat properly you develop the bleeding bleeding from the front passage please come back to us or call 999 offer the leaflets about the pregnancy only in case if you are discharging the patient if you are admitting the patient do not offer the leaflets and then advise her like if for example if she says to her i want to terminate my pregnancy you should say that you need to have follow up with your gp for that and you can discuss the next steps in the uh, in pregnancy with your gp all right you are not supposed because you are in emergency department doctor you are not supposed to discuss these steps with the patient okay so that's it all this is the end of all the obstetric station so if any one of you have any question you can ask hello if any one of you have any question people you can ask you can unmute yourself hello people kindly do respond because otherwise i won't uh, i won't be able to know that if you people are okay with that of you people have any question <clears throat> uh ma'am i have Did a you? question um in opt Ops, do we start with like the previous pregnancies and all that? We don't go for HOPI like we do in medicine. Yes, definitely. You have to start with the pregnancy history. For example, H. For example, not all the HOPI that the, you covered in the medicine. You have to be focused. For example, like in eclampsia case, if we say she was having hyper, ask a few questions about the headache, what symptoms you are having, and and what symptoms you are having, and for how long. That's it. don't go in much detail okay okay thank you you're welcome anyone else want to ask anything people hello i think i have made myself clear if anybody of you want to practice you people are uh, more than welcome but if you people uh, don't you have i if i have if you people don't want to practice we can end the meeting i think i have made myself clear and i have tried my best to deliver all the information i have to you for you people so wish you good luck and last but not the least people always 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 try to practice uh, always make a group of two or three from the very beginning that is really important for you people to pass the exam read the stems carefully read the notes carefully and practice in a proper way all right you should know the knowledge you should have the knowledge because once you will have the knowledge then you would be able to answer the questions otherwise you won't be able to answer the question okay and also uh, work on your tone when the patient is speaking do not interrupt it have a habit make a habit from now to listen to the patient even if the patient is taking like 3 to 5 minutes and your whole scenario is you are left with the whole scenario do not talk let the patient talk even if in the whole scenario you do not talk the patient is continuously talking with you he is discussing his concerns till you will get the marks but if you interrupt the patient you won't get any marks 
okay so these are a few things that you have to learn your whole whole consultation should be patient centered and um, good luck for in the, for the future plap to exam is not difficult you just have to learn the tricks you just have to learn the approach how you are going to deal with different situations that's it that is really uh, easy exam just 3 to 4 months preparation that's it okay people i think i have made myself clear and you people uh, don't have any question uh, further all right people good luck uh, i'm ending this meeting thank you so much and do give a feedback if it is a good feedback feedback then you can give in the group but if it is a bad one you can give it personally to me so i can work on that thank you so much for your time bye bye take care